Hello, I'm Lisa Orgler, and today I'll be sharing how I use Photoshop to edit a hand-drawn landscape plan. The first thing to do is to scan in an image that you've drawn, and you can do this with a scanner or you can use your phone if it's small enough, and then I just save it typically as a JPEG, but you can also save it as a PNG if you'd like. The next step is to pull up Photoshop and I am using the most current Photoshop from the Creative Cloud. Now we can open our file by going to File, Open, and then this is the image that I scanned in earlier. Here's my landscape plan. I've done a simple plan with ink and then I added color to it with marker. I like to keep the original drawing just in case I need to go back to it. So to save this one, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and then I will call it something. And I'll just save it as a JPEG for now, but later when we're done with our project, we'll save it as a PSD, which is a Photoshop document. The next thing you can do is to adjust the image the way you need it. I'm not sure if you need to rotate your image or not, but if you do, you can go into image and then image rotation. You have several options. You can flip it 180 degrees, you can go 90 degree clockwise, counterclockwise, or you can do arbitrary. Arbitrary is nice if you just need to tweak it a little bit. So maybe I just, I think mine's okay, but let's just say I want to just tweak it two degrees clockwise. If I click on OK, you can see that it just slightly turns that, but I'm going to go ahead and go back. But it's nice to have that option if you just need to move it a little bit. The next thing I like to do is crop the image so we can focus exactly on what we'll be working with. In my case, I scanned in more than I needed. I have my marker swatch extravaganza at the bottom, and I really don't need that anymore. That was just to pick colors out. So I'm going to crop this image. The crop tool is over on the left side on the toolbar. And if you hover over any of these, it'll tell you what they are, which is a really nice feature. So we'll click on that. And you can either use the cropping tool this way by dragging and making a square, or you can use these grips on the square or the rectangle around the space that you want and pull it in. So either way, whatever works best for you. And then you can double click at the end to crop it. So now we have the image that we need to work with. Now that we have the image cropped, the next step is to make the white space around your image an actual pure white. Though it looks like it's white, it's actually more of a gray tone, and you wouldn't notice this unless you pull this image into an all-white background, then you will suddenly see a gray border around your image. There are two ways that I do this. One is using the magic wand tool, and the other is using levels. The first I'd like to use is the magic wand tool. This is the magic wand tool on my toolbar. When you see these little arrows on the bottom right hand corner of the boxes, it means there's other tools under there also. So I'm going to click on mine so you can see what I mean. There's a quick selection tool under there also. So if for some reason you see this tool instead, you might have to click on it to find the magic wand tool. So now that we have that clicked, all I'm going to do is click on the white space that I want to make pure white. And you'll see that a dashed line goes all the way around that edge. While it's highlighted, you'll want to hit the delete button on your keyboard. When this window pops up, you will want the contents window to be white. You can also make it black or another 50% gray, or you can actually change it to any color in your swatch panel, but we want to make it pure white. And then that's it. So you can go ahead and click OK. Hopefully you can see that the background became a pure white. You can test this 
by using your eyedropper tool. And when you click on the white background with the eyedropper tool, you can double click on this square. And when this window pops up, you can see that the R, G, and B letters are all 255, which means it's a pure white. Or if this line is all Fs, it is also a pure white. So we're good to go. The only downfall of the magic wand tool is if you have other whites in your image, you may have to use your magic wand to hand pick each of those elements, which can get cumbersome at times. I'm okay with the grays staying within the image. I just don't like the gray on the outside because it looks strange when you pull it into a white background and have this gray border around it. Another way to make your whites white is to use the Levels tool. And that is under Image, Adjustments, and Levels. This window has an input level box. And within that box, you can adjust your whites, which is the right. And if I move this over, you'll see that my image is getting lighter. The left side are the darks or the blacks. And the middle is your gray tones. And you can adjust these however you wish. And before I forget, make sure you click your preview button. So as you adjust these, you can see in real time what's happening on your image. One of the positive aspects of using the levels command is that you can adjust all your whites at the same time. The con is it also alters your other colors. So you have to be very careful how you're using this so you don't end up with fluorescent colors or have colors too dark. I usually start with my whites and pull it over to the left. And if it feels like my colors are getting too light, then I start adjusting the gray tones in the middle. And it actually looks pretty good. I'm not sure if it's working, but what I like to do now is try the eyedropper tool to check my whites to see if they're actually white. I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool, click on the white in the background. This would adjust this bottom square, so I'm going to double click on that again. And when I look, they're all 255 and all Fs. So my whites are white using the levels tool. So those are two ways you can create your pure white background. Now that our whites are pure white, let's start editing our drawing and cleaning up the things that we would either like to eliminate or fix. The first thing I'd like to do is zoom in a little bit closer so we can see the details in our drawing. You can do this by going to View, Zoom In, and you can zoom in as much as you'd like. There are two tools that I like to use to clean up my drawing. One is the Brush Tool, and one is the Clone Stamp Tool. For simpler areas, I just use the brush tool. And for more complex areas, I use the clone stamp tool. And you'll understand why in a little bit. The brush tool is located here on the toolbar. And the brush tool can be used to add color to a drawing. I'm going to be using it to cover up areas with paint or with color that I don't want shown anymore. So for instance, I'm going to zoom in on my drawing even more because I've noticed that the pink from my shrubs got into my lawn and I'd like to clean that up. So I will zoom in as much as I need to so I can fix that. Now I will use the eyedropper tool. I will copy the green that I want to place over the pink and you will see it's down here on our little two boxes that I had mentioned before. This time I want to flip them so the green is on top. So when I use the brush tool, it'll be that green that it brushes. I will use that to brush over this pink, but I can see my brush is too large. The circle is the size of my brush. So I can fix that by going to the toolbar at the top and making that a little bit smaller. And this is getting a little bit better. Perfect. Now that I have the green on top and my brush is the correct size, I can go in and fix some of that pink. And I'm not too worried about it being perfect because the nature of marker is to be a little imperfect. 
but I would like to just show you how this paintbrush works. We'll zoom in a little bit more. And you can see a lot of my pink is, is disappearing because I'm just covering it up with the green from the background. And you can clean this up as much as you want, but that's probably about as much as I need to do. Maybe just a little bit. Sometimes this can be a little addicting because you'll want to go back and clean up everything in your drawing. But I think that's probably good for now. Now if we zoom out, you'll see that a lot of that pink is gone. I could, I could go in there more and probably clean up a little bit more, but that's one way of doing it. The other tool that I like to use to edit my drawing is the clone stamp tool, which is just below the paintbrush tool on my toolbar. You can click on that. The clone stamp tool is for more complicated areas. For instance, maybe there are shades of color that you want to replicate or a pattern. The clone stamp tool picks those types of things up. So for instance, I would like to eliminate this word lawn. And the clone stamp tool might be better for that because there's a lot of different colors of green in this area and I want to make sure I don't lose that. The clone stamp tool is found under the paintbrush and this tool is great for areas that are more complicated in terms of color tones or patterns and you'll see what I mean in a second. Once I click on the tool I can do alt click to copy an area. So I'm going to copy this area. I'm hitting alt and I'm clicking at the same time to make this little circle and then once I let go I can then go over the, the area that I want to go over and what's happening is that it's copying the area that I clicked on earlier. So can you see the crosshair that's moving below? And it's just copying where the crosshair is and covering up the word lawn with it. I like this tool because it blends in a little bit more. It's not just one color, so it doesn't hopefully look like I went in there and just put one swath of color over it, but it's actually replicating the pattern that is on my screen. I'll continue to use the clone stamp tool to eliminate the rest of these words also. Now I like to zoom in to eliminate the leader line that's on the patio. I might try a smaller brush for this one. Alt click again to match the area I want to try. Now let's zoom out and see what it looks like. Now your drawing is ready to be pulled into another format, perhaps like Illustrator, so you can label it. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me.